Hello everybody, my name is Flame and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to optimize Discord for the best performance you can get out of your games and other stuff like that while still talking to your buddies in Discord and even streaming in Discord. So without further ado, please leave a like on this video or subscribe to my channel. I promise I'll get into the video in a second, but it does help me in the algorithm. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So if you didn't already know, Discord is Chromium based, just like Google Chrome. So it does have high RAM usage by default because it is Chromium based. And that's just the deal with all Chromium based applications. That's kind of how the world has been going right now with um, talking programs or like just programs in general that use WebGL and web and stuff like that. Anyway, if you take a look here at my task manager, you will notice that Discord is only using precisely around 150 megabyte at idle. And if I click open on it, link description, by the way, to my Discord, we are almost close to 300 members, guys. So if you join there, I'm active almost all the time, if not every single day. And I would appreciate if you join my Discord because it will help me get further to that Discord that I have always wanted. Anyway, even with it open, I still am only getting around 200 megabyte of RAM usage. Now you're probably asking, how did I achieve this? Because Discord usually has about, I don't know, 300, maybe 400 megabyte of RAM usage. I've seen some people get up to as high as 800 megabyte of RAM usage when they're doing a lot of tasks. And I, after I've done these tweaks, have not noticed any difference whatsoever in my RAM usage. It has always stayed probably at a minimum of around 500 megabyte, which is amazing. At least it's underneath a gig, guys. That's like really good for a Chromium application. If you can get it underneath a gigabyte of RAM usage while you're using it, then you are solid. Anyway, what I did is I found out that there's a secret folder. Well, it's not really secret. It is there, but there is stuff inside of that folder that does make you have higher RAM usage that isn't needed. And I'm going to show you guys where that folder is. So go down to your search tab here, type percentage app data percentage. And then once you've found the app data folder, click just the app data folder, get out of roaming, go to local and then find discord. So here's discord, obviously all the discord files. Go to the app version, which should be here or somewhere in this list. Now go into the modules section. And as you can see, I only have about four things here, but you are going to have a lot more. Now I've had Discord installed since last year, so I noticed these files stuck around. So if you see right here, they have an original creation date of around 8.6 and that that's basically where how old these files are. And I don't understand why they stuck around when I had them on my PC, but um, these files just aren't needed. Uh, I found this from a forum post. Uh, I forgot on which forum, but it was a forum post. Someone found out that you can disable a bunch of stuff in Discord and like get rid of a bunch of the Discord stuff in the Discord folder. And it lowered his RAM usage by like 300 to 400 megabyte, which is insane. He went from 800 to like 500 or 400 megabyte which is insane. Anyway, these are the folders. So discord dash, uh, discord underscore cloud sync, discord dispatch, discord ERL pack, discord game utils, discord crisp, discord modules, discord overlay, discord RPC and discord spell check. Now I've obviously deleted all those. And if you guys don't want to go through the trouble of looking through that list, you can just look here and see what I have left. So this is what I have left, guys. I have Discord Desktop Core, Discord, Discord Media, Discord Spellcheck, Discord Utils, and Discord Voice. These are the essential packages to keep Discord running. And you can run Discord with just the essential packages. You don't need any of this extra stuff here, and it will not affect Discord in any way. You can just run Discord with these essential packages here, and it will be such a big difference in your RAM usage and overall usage. And I have not noticed any performance issues with Discord performing while screen sharing or any of that stuff with having all those services disabled. So now after you go ahead and disable all that, by the way, I should mention before you delete these, if you already have deleted them, make sure you take them out of your recycling bin real quick and then delete them again in a minute, but make sure Discord is completely closed. So check your task manager, click apps and look for all the background processes and make sure that discord is not open. If discord is open while you do this, it will cause a crash and it will loop because it will not know where all these are and you'll have a lot of issues with it. So basically close discord, make sure discord is a hundred percent closed. 
I cannot specify this enough. Make sure it is 100% closed and then only keep these four core files. Now, once you've done that, you can go ahead, go to Discord, reopen it again, and you should see that Discord has a much lower RAM usage. Now, guys, obviously I'm in a lot of servers and stuff like that, but if you want to join my server, the Inferno or Flame Cord, link is in the description, guys. You can join today and you can get us to 300 members. We are currently at 200 members and I love being at 200 members because it's amazing, but I'm active almost every single day in the community, guys. Just go ahead, join it, link in description and in the comments section. And without further ado, let me show you exactly what Discord settings that you should disable. So now that we've debloated our Discord app folder, let's just go through some of the settings that you can check and disable inside of your Discord settings. So here inside of my Discord settings, I have voice activity on. That's my default device. Um, make sure that auto sensitivity is off if you use a mic because that takes RAM usage and uh, not RAM usage necessarily, but CPU usage. Uh, video, make sure all video backgrounds are off unless you want a video background. I mean, it takes more resource usage. I don't understand why you would. Now, I'm going to tell you in a minute to disable hardware acceleration, and you may think it's a little counterintuitive to leave it on inside of the voice and video settings, and you should just disable it flat out. But actually, I found out that having it disabled not only decreased the overall quality and performance of the screen share, but it actually resulted in way higher CPU usage on your CPU, especially when I was playing a game. I would notice that Discord would be taking up almost 40 or 55% of my CPU while playing games. But then as soon as I turned the setting on, my CPU usage dropped down to around 10 and my GPU usage did go up a little bit. It went up to like four or 5%, but guys, that's like nothing. And honestly, just leaving this on is fine. Any of these settings down here, I recommend uh, only having on just noise reduction and automatic gain control. Echo cancellation is kind of pointless unless you have really, really bad headphones that echo a lot or you're just in an environment that echoes a lot with speakers and stuff like that. And overall, all these settings just decrease your mic quality. Now, if you have a really good microphone like me, you technically don't need any of these enabled, but... I do still enable them anyway, as it does help a little bit with noises like this. Hello. You know, just those general background noises and stuff. It just gets rid of them. And uh, moving along here, um, I usually disable use an experimental method to capture audio from your applications because I noticed that when I had this setting on, I had massive drops in both my video and audio, like just my audio would desync with my video. But as soon as I disabled this, my audio and video would be synced up perfectly when I'd be playing games. Not only that, it also just made me have less resource usage for some reason. I don't understand why this experimental method causes that, but it does. Uh, disable all logging in Discord. You do not want logs. Logs take space. They also just are quite annoying use network usage and all that other stuff moving down to windows settings here make sure you have open discord unchecked because that'll just increase your startup time and increase your ram usage at startup not only that it will also cache things inside of the discord folder having startup on make sure that everything is cached this basically when you disable the setting every time you close discord it will clear the cache it will not save the cache and it'll reload it every single time i found that out Actually, recently, even before I found out about the app data folder, and it is so helpful because not only does it keep Discord fast, but it also reduced my RAM usage as well. So we're going to go down here, basically just keep open Discord off and then minimize to tray. Make sure this is enabled because a lot of people don't have that enabled. And then when they hit the X button, it fully closes Discord. It's just convenient because it's an easy way to open and close Discord just like that. Just the window itself, the background service stays. So moving along in advanced, I recommend to fully disable hardware acceleration and it's going to give you a warning here. Just go ahead and relaunch Discord. Basically disabling hardware acceleration allows your GPU to have more resources available to it so that it can play games better and much smoother. I will admit very much so smoother than it would normally be. And you also just get more FPS. Now, huge, huge setting right here that I'm sure like almost 80 or 90% of you know about, but probably not all of you know about is the discord game overlay now if you're using this for games like apex or among us or something like that i get the use because it shows who's talking and it's just nice to have that on your like stream as an overlay and stuff but 
For those games, I recommend just leaving it on, but uh, it does affect your FPS by quite a significant amount. I found that sometimes it's like 20 to 30 frames per second just from having this enabled. Now, it's not as noticeable on systems that have really high-end components like 30 series cards or 20 series cards and like really high core count CPUs like 8 core 16 threads, 10 core 20 threads, or even 64 cores. Like, I don't know who's running that, but the crazy person who is out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter. Anyway, have this disabled if you want to get just a little bit of an FP that I cannot speak today. I apologize. A little bit of an FPS boost inside of Discord. This will help significantly. And with that, that's everything inside of Discord. Thank you again for watching this video. If it did help, I appreciate you leaving a like on this video to help the, me with the algorithm. And if you did also like this content, subscribe. I am trying to post videos at least once every two to three weeks because of my schedule. And I'll see you guys later in the next video.